Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're going to talk about the NRCS Equip High Tunnel. A lot of people have expressed interest in building high tunnels uh, for their farm or getting uh, going through the Equip program to uh, get high tunnels for their farm. Uh, we are in that process. It's been uh, been on our list of things to do for quite some time. We went ahead and kicked that process off. So I want to talk to you about uh, this, how this is going to work. So. This is a three video or a three uh, part session for the high tunnel build. Uh, we're gonna go into how we started down the process with FSA and RCS, how we get approved for EQIP, um, all the way through how we build the high tunnel out. So we'll go ahead and start. This is video part one. So I wanna talk about USDA and NRCS um, from the perspective of um, what you hear out on the street about these programs. So um, USDA or the NRCS, FSA, all these services, um, I've heard many farmers, uh, some very high profile farmers and some um, local farmers talk about these programs are handouts. Um, and the other, that, that's the first big negative I hear. And the other negative I hear is that uh, if you get into these programs, they have the ability to inspect your farm at any time as they want. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. Um, it's not a handout. Uh, it's designed to help get you, get you off the ground in your production environment much faster so that we can produce um, products for sale uh, in the environment or in, in our communities uh, and in our grocery stores. So this is really not a handout. It's how do we get you up and running faster to benefit the community? And at the same time, the funding that comes from USDA and NRCS is taxpayer dollars. So it really is a, a good methodology for um, taxpayer dollars. We want to know where our money goes, right? So if the NRCS is providing funding to a farm to install a high tunnel, they're going to come inspect that or they have the ability to inspect that for X number of years, very similar to an amortization schedule that you would have for a vehicle or a house on your taxes, right? So at the end of three three years, I think is the number for the high tunnel, it's in your contract. Um, for three years, they can come and inspect that. And in Texas, uh, my NRCS field representative told me, we'll call and schedule a time for you to come in there. We don't just want to enter your property without you knowing it. We want to schedule that time so that we can come do what we need to do to prove to the taxpayers that you're utilizing their dollars the way that we want them to be used and the way that they should be used. So um, I don't think they're handouts and I don't think they're doing anything that is um, inappropriate. They are. They can only inspect the pieces that they paid for. So if a high tunnel is one of the NRCS equip uh, opportunities you utilize or livestock watering, um, they can only inspect those pieces uh, related to that product. They can't come look at your entire farm. They're going to come look at the high tunnel and make sure that you installed it correctly and that you've maintained it after a windstorm. You're responsible for it. So they're paying for it. The taxpayer dollars are paying for it, but you have to maintain it for that three years. So if you have a windstorm or something that tears the high tunnel apart or rips the plastic on it, you're responsible for, for replacing that and and keeping that tunnel functional for those three years. So I don't think it's a handout. I think it's a, a good use of taxpayer dollars and an audit uh, to make sure that the taxpayer dollars are being used the way they're supposed to. So now let's move on into how do we start the process. So for those of you that have never applied for an EQIP um, program or, at all, uh, and you're a brand new farmer, the first thing that you have to do is get your farm number. So you've got to go to the Farm Service Agency or the FSA, um, take your plat uh, copy of your DD-214 and um, your ID uh, so that they can issue a farm number for your farm. Once you have your farm, num farm number, you can go to the NRCS office, which is usually very close, if not in the same facility as the FSA office. And uh, you can schedule uh, you go in and meet your RCS agent and tell them, or your field representative, and tell them, hey, I, I need a farm plan. I'm a new farm, um, and I'd like your opinions on on how you think and what we can do based off of our farming operation intentions and our business plan. So they will come out 
you'll schedule, they'll come out to your farm, they will walk your place, listen to your plan. If you have your your battleground or breaking ground business plan, it's a good thing to give them a copy of that so they can see your operation. And they're gonna tell you some things about your land that are very useful. They're gonna tell you what your soils are like, what your grasses are, what your water tables are, which aquifers are underneath your property. They're gonna tell you a lot of things that are gonna be very useful to you later in the future. Um, you're also going to talk to them about the operations that you want to do, such as a high tunnel. So there are some rules about installing high tunnels and best practices. If you're going to use Equip, you cannot put that high tunnel within so many feet of a water well. You can't put it within so many feet of um, a septic tank. Um, so your elevation's got to be right. Your... Um, runoff and how the water is handled as water flows through your property that comes around and through that high tunnel, they're going to give you the best practices. You're going to tell them where you want to put it, and they're going to tell you if you can or you can't, or they're going to offer you options and opinions on how to, to modify those things if you want to utilize the EQIP programs. So um, once you've done that, you can apply for EQIP, and they're going to fill out a piece of paper, um, you're going to sign it, they're going to send it off, they're going to see if you're qualified, which you will be in most cases. They'll, you'll be qualified and then you'll receive a notification a few weeks later that, hey, I'm uh, I'm equipped, qualified. Uh, so you can now, or authorized. So now you can go back into that office and request um, an equipped program that you want to do. So once you're approved um, for the high tunnel, in this case, um, you're an RCS field representative is going to reach out and say, hey, we have a contract for you to sign. Um, you'll come back in, you'll read the contract, or they'll email it to you, you'll read it, and you'll have to sign it, send it back to them, or go into their office and sign it. Um, but they're going to have some conversations. They're going to explain to you everything the contract says, what your requirements are, how long you have to uh, install the tunnel. So uh, in our case, it's one year from the date that you sign the contract. Um, so once you sign it, you have a year to order it, um, get it on your property, install it, and call them back for an inspection. They come and inspect it, and then whatever those funds are due to you, they will go ahead and write you a check for those funds. Um, as a military veteran, you have the ability to request 50% of the funds up front. That is a big change. Um, that's a recent change. But if you do the request for 50% of the funds up front for the high tunnel, it changes your timeline from one year to 90 days. So if I'm requesting, I want half of the of the funds for this equip program up front to offset my expenses, um, you now have 90 days to get it done from the moment that they send you the funds. So the moment that the, the check is, is distributed, your 90 day count starts. Uh, and that's to receive it, install it, get it inspected. Ordering your high tunnel. Work with your NRCS. First thing, work with your NRCS agent to make sure that whatever high tunnel or distributor or manufacturer you're looking at is actually supported by the NRCS, meaning that they meet the requirements. So your six mil thick plastic for your cover, that's a requirement for your warranty on the cover, five year warranty on um, the rest of the structure uh, and all of the equipment to put the structure together, right? Uh, NRCS is not going to tell you who to buy from, but they have particular customers that, or, or manufacturers and distributors that they like to work with that have worked with them in the future and have provided great service. We used FarmTech um, uh, or Grower Supply uh, as a subsidiary of FarmTech. Um, our NRCS field representative had never used them before. And uh, I probably won't use them again, but that's a personal preference. We'll get into that later as we get into the build. Um, there are multiple ways to finance this, depending on how the companies want to handle it, right? Um, if you're not outright purchasing the high tunnel for cash money, then you're going to finance in some form or fashion. Um, the farm tech, for example, is going to request a copy of your NRCS contract that you sign. Um, with the NRCS to prove that it is uh, an equip funded program. Um, my recommendation to you is 
in your equip contract when you sign it there is a dollar amount that they're going to pay you um, when this high tunnel is done or 50 percent up front and 50 percent when it's com- inspected and completed um, make a copy of your contract before you send it to farm tech and black out that dollar amount so they can't see it because i found that shipping prices can be modified um, rather quickly and can increase if people have the ability to see the dollar amount that's in that contract. So obscure that dollar amount so they can't see it and then send them the contract. Um, we did, uh, in our case, we did the purchase. Um, we requested 50% of the funds up front, so we now have 90 days to get the high tunnel installed. When your high tunnel arrives, these are things that I don't know how other companies are, do it, but I know for farm tech, this is how it works. When the high tunnel arrives, you will be responsible for getting that high tunnel off the truck. Um, The supplier doesn't really care how easy or difficult that is for you. Um, They may not even schedule a truck with a lift gate to get the product outside of the back of the truck. We got lucky. I called um, the delivery company and asked if the truck coming was had a lift gate. They said it wasn't scheduled for one, and that, of course, is an additional cost that's going to be charged back to farm tech, farm tech's then going to charge that to you. We didn't request the lift gate. We just got lucky and the truck that came out had a lift gate on it, but we were prepared if they had, we had uh, the tracker, the buckets, the forks, chains, we could get it all off. Um, So we got it off. No problem. Uh, Our tunnel is a 30 by 72. Um, It's two boxes delivered on two individual pallets. They're very long pallets, not your typical, um, square pallet like concrete would come on or cubes. Um, they're almost double, little more than double in size of a traditional pallet. Um, as soon as you receive the, the high tunnel, uh, get those boxes close to where you're going to do your installation and inventory everything that's in there. You have a short window uh, of requesting replacement parts that were damaged or not in the kit. We did not have any, any pieces missing. Um, and our product did not come damaged. Um, <clears throat> additional thoughts on high tunnels. The manufacturers make their money off of the accessory kits. For example, tie-down kits, ventilation kits, end wall kits, and irrigation systems. This tunnel does not come with a tie-down kit, meaning there's nothing to secure it into the ground other than the post that you drive into the ground to that become the legs for your arches. There's no support, no concrete, no anything to support that in the ground. There's not even a a stake off structure where you can go drive stakes to anchor the tunnel to. So um, those are listed as optional, which will make it easy uh, at inspection time because the instructions are horribly written and they're so vague and all of the pieces other than the kit are optional. So your inspection is going to be, hey, we installed it the way they said in the instructions and all those other kits are optional. We didn't use them. We did our own. So um, your inspection should be easy to pass. We'll get into what we did and, and how we uh, secured our tunnel. We'll show you exactly all those pieces later. Um, the end walls can be configured in multiple numerous ways that are not listed in the instructions. If you're not buying their kit. Um, then you have the plastic to work with and they recommend what you should do. Um, we, we framed ours out and we'll show you the framing as we go. We'll show you the uprights that we installed um, with the base uh, and the concrete for our tie down structure. Um, so think about how you want to frame that out. You can just leave it a curtain or you can frame it out and give you yourself some additional support to um, the arches of your high tunnel. Um, There's just a lot of options and we can go into a few of those as we frame it out. That's all I've got for right now. What we're going to do next is move out and I'll show you the kit and how we installed it, leveled it, and I'll explain to you why we did the things that we did. Thanks, talk to you in a bit.